Well, that didn't quite work out as well as I had planned. Originally, I had an idea to do a donut and film it with a drone. I thought that would look really cool in the intro. Never done a donut before, so last week I went out and I tried practicing it. Turns out it's a lot harder than I thought. All I ended up doing was breaking my windshield. So my bike is a 2018 Honda CB500X and in this video I'm going to show you some of the modifications I've done to the bike. In the next video I will cover all the camera attachments that I did to film my road trip. Yes I did take eight cameras with me but in this particular video I'm going to strictly focus on some of the modifications I've done to the bike to make it a little bit more rider friendly for myself. Starting up front, I have a set of GV crash bars that you can see I've actually ended up using a number of times. Next are a series of uh, cheapo items that I've bought from uh, China. First are was these fog lights that actually turned out to be surprisingly bright. I was quite surprised actually how bright they are and how long they've actually held up. So they've done a pretty good job, especially useful considering how bad the stock headlamp is on the uh, CB500X. Um, behind the headlamps, I have uh, just a uh, radiator guard. And then moving further on up the bike, I installed a set of clear indicators. And I thought uh, with the LED headlight, I think the clear indicators give it kind of a nice look. Okay, so let's talk about the windscreen. <laughs> if you're a 500 CBX owner, you're gonna spend a lot of money messing around with this windscreen, trying to get the right setup for you. Everybody's body shape is different, how everybody rides is different, and to try to get the best setup so you avoid buffeting and all that uh, is a bit of trial and error. Uh, unfortunately, it's trial and error, and unfortunately, it can get kind of expensive. Um, I have what's called the Palmer Products bracket on here, and so instead of buying the expensive uh, windscreen like a mad stat one or something like that which now that i'm thinking about it i probably spent more money buying all this other crap from china and i could have just bought that one in the first place but anyways i originally i thought with the, with the palmer products bracket I, it's got like nine different settings on it so i thought well with nine different settings i should be able to find one with the stock windscreen that i like so i ordered this bracket and this bracket is fantastic you can adjust it in in, in, in like nine different ways i think it actually may even have 18 depending on um how you adjust the, the stock bracket to the windscreen to the bike so um, it's got a, a whole bunch of different uh, options for you and i tried that at first and it did make an improvement it definitely was an improvement but what i found was there was a lot of air coming from when i raised the windscreen all the way as high as it could go it did do a good job of pushing there over my helmet but then there was a ton of air that was coming down in this area and it was hitting me on both sides of my helmet like right around this part here and so what i ended up doing was ordering a cheapo windscreen from china that i when i measured it was a little bit taller and a little bit wider than the stock one and that's the one that I ended up breaking when I was trying to do the donut so I'm back to the stock one but what I found was that with the Palmer products bracket and that Chinese windscreen that's a little bit wider and a little bit taller than the stock one uh, that was actually pretty good the Chinese one is not as not as strong obviously it broke it's a bit flimsy um, so I don't really trust it long term I did actually see a Madstad one on a CB500X in my area once and I kind of you know looked at it it is really a, it's a chunk of metal not a metal but it's, it's a solid piece of uh glass or whatever that thing is made out of like it's sturdy the chinese one is not sturdy when i go down the highway i can actually see the top like waving around like this but it's only 35 dollars so i ordered a couple more of them in case i break and break some more but um for you i mean depends on your body shape where you sit on the bike how you ride and all that you're just gonna have to bite the bullet and try lots of different windscreens and brackets and stuff like that to see the to find the one that suits you best for me the Palmer products with this Chinese windscreen is not bad. It's not ideal. I, Having seen that Madstad one, I kind of think that that one might be a better option. So I may go that route later on, but this is about the third windscreen that I've on. So for now, this one's not too bad. Behind the windscreen, I have just a cheapo uh, GPS mount that I bought off of Amazon, uh, which I attached the quad lock to. The quad lock I use obviously to, for my phone. And then for the camera mount, uh, I've actually bought this when I was in Japan. This, this company is called Rec Mount and they're a Japanese company. And they make all sorts of interesting mounts, mainly for bicycles. So I bought this when I was in Japan, uh, but I've actually repurposed it for use on my motorcycle. 
Moving to the sides of the bike, I have a pair of bark busters on there. I believe these are the ones called the Storm. Uh, these are the ones with the metal railing on the inside, which is extremely helpful when you drop the bike because uh, it does a good job of protecting your uh, bars and your levers and whatnot. I also replaced the stock levers with these smaller, shorter ones. Uh, called Ride It. I, once again, I just got these off of Amazon. And the reason why I bought these is because they actually moved the lever closer to the handle grip. I have really like kind of short fingers, short, small hands. And so I found that with the stock ones, I was like the very edge of my fingertips when I was in the friction zone. So these ones have made it far easier for me to engage the clutch because they are closer to the uh, handlebar. This saddle is a custom one from Seat Concepts. I found that the stock seat, I would kind of slide forward into the tank a lot on long distance trips. So I had this one ordered from Seat Concepts and so far I've been very happy with it. It's extremely comfortable. The other thing that I've spent a lot of money on messing around with is this foot peg. And the reason why I spent so much money messing around with this foot peg is because I bought a pair of adventure vo uh, boots. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna be an adventure rider. I gotta have a pair of adventure boots. Adv adventure boots. <laughs> uh, so I ordered these adventure boots. They cost me a fortune because I had to order them from the United States. I live in Canada. The customs lady decided to mm -mm me a little bit in terms of duty and stuff like that. So they ended up costing me a fortune. So I'm all excited to get my adventure boots. I put my adventure boots on. I go for a ride. <laughs> I can't shift. I can't bend my ankle down enough to get under the shifter. I'm like, oh my God, what am I going to do? I just spent a fortune on these stupid boots. I got to be able to shift them. So instead of like biting the bullet and just selling the boots, I decide to spend a lot more money on the fixing the shifter thingy so the first thing i did was bought these sw motec um what do you call it? foot pegs foot pegs because you can lower these you can actually adjust these a little bit it's got this really unique cam system where you can adjust it and i thought well that's a good idea and also too actually i wanted to lower the pegs a bit for when i stand up when i go off road because when I, I found for me when i stand up i'm a little bit high on the bike so i thought well if i could lower them a bit it'll make it a little bit better for when i'm standing and then if i can lower them i can get my toe underneath the shifter and i can shift so i bought these sw motec um uh, foot pegs and let me tell you something these things are beefy these are these are the chunky foot peg i mean i love these things the machining in these is fantastic took a while to get to because the sw motec canadian website is garbage um, but i finally got a hold of them and uh this the the, the cam feature that allows you to kind of move them around like that to, to dial them in for your riding style is absolutely fantastic but i still couldn't get my toe underneath the shifter so then what did i do i went back on uh back over to china and i ordered these shifter levers from china because i thought that uh um why did i order these things i can't remember why i ordered oh i know why i ordered these things it's because when i dropped my bike i bent my shifter a little bit and so i thought well these things have this little you know foldable shift knob thingy in it and i thought well if i drop the bike again they would be better this one with the got like an extended on it so i thought i like with the extension i thought i could get my boot under but i still can't get my boot under so i've gone back to the stock shifter uh, but i've kept the sw motec uh, foot pegs on here because i really like how these things work Moving towards the back of the bike, I have a rear hugger uh, made by a company called Power Bronze. I was really surprised that uh, the stock bike doesn't have any protection for the rear shock at all. Considering it's marketed as an adventure bike, which is designed to go off-road, in stock form, all that mud and guck that's going to get kicked up from the rear tire is going to be uh, slammed up against your uh, rear shock there. So I bought this uh, hugger just to give the rear shock a little bit of uh, relief from all that. Um, and then also I mounted a tool tube uh, behind the GV rack. So this tool tube just sits behind the rack and it's a very convenient way for me to store my tools uh, on my bike. Moving to the other side of the bike, I have what uh, has got to be my favorite accessory so far, which is the slip-on can by a company called Pipeworks. I love the little X detail in the exhaust tip. It matches the branding of the bike and uh, gives this little tiny 47 horsepower engine a little bit of a growl.
to store everything, I have a set of GV Outback side cases. This is a 37 liter one. And uh, for a top case, I have a Nanook 930. And I love this case. This Nanook case is fantastic. I mean, it allows me to store all my camera equipment in one case. And I especially like the inlet organizer. This organizer, I mean, this space is just dead space normally, right? So they built this organizer that just slots right in there. And it's just really great for allowing me to keep everything nice and organized. So that's my 2018 Honda CB500X. Great beginner bike. Um, I'm really happy that I, I started on this bike. It's uh, starting to outgrow it a little bit. I've uh, test ridden the Triumph Tiger 900 and that's definitely the bike that I want to trade this thing in for. So hopefully uh, next time I make one of these videos, I'll be riding a Triumph. But if you're looking for a beginner friendly adventure bike, I definitely recommend the Honda. I think it's a great starter bike. In my next video, I will cover uh, how I filmed my road trip. I took eight cameras, how I attached them all to the bike and how I filmed that. I'll be covering that in my next video. Turn. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, turn. Why are you going backwards? Turn, point the toe, look where I want to go, lean the bike, rev it up, dump the clutch. No worries.